Hey everybody, welcome back to Everything Ham Radio. Today we're going to be talking about the Elenco DR135, 235, and 435. So stick around. Hey everybody, welcome back to Everything Ham Radio. My name is Curtis, my call sign is Kilo5 Charlie Lima Mike. And like I said, today we're going to be talking about the Alinko DR135, 235, and 435. That is the 2 meter, 220, and 440 mono band mobile radios made by Alinko. But before we get into that, please make sure you click on that subscribe button down in the bottom right hand corner, as well as the bell icon so you don't miss anything. All right, let's go ahead and get into this overview video. Now, the Alinko DR135 retails on Amazon right now for $194.95. The 235 retails on Amazon for $285. There is links in the description below for both of these radios. Both of these are affiliate links. Now the 435 I couldn't find on Amazon, uh, so, but I did include a link to a ham radio outlet where you can buy it directly from there. Um, as of this recording, there is uh, the price at Ham Radio Outlet is $229.95 after rebates. Now, it doesn't show what the regular price is for, for whatever reason, but after rebates, it's $229.95. Okay, the frequencies of these radios, the 135, which is the 2 meter radio, will transmit on 144 to 147.995. Now I'm just gonna round this off to 148 just for the sake of this video, but it's gonna be one or five hertz less, okay? So the transmit is 144 to 148, which is the entire ham band. The receive on it is 118 to 136 on AM and 136 to 174 on FM. The 220 version of this, the 235 radio, uh, transmits on 222 to 225 and will receive on 219 to 280 megahertz. The 440 version of this, the 435, will transmit on 430 to 450 and will receive from 340 to 512 megahertz. The power outputs for these radios. The 135 will do 50 watts on high power, 20 watts on medium power, and 5 watts on low power. The 235 will be 25 watts on high, 10 watts on medium, and 5 watts on low. And the 435 will do 35 watts on high power, 20 watts on medium power, and 5 watts on low power. Now that is pretty much it as far as the differences go of these radios. So. The rest of this, all the radios are going to be the same, whether you're talking about the 135, the 235, or the 435. Each of the radios have 100 memory channels plus one call channel memory. The radios have a seven character alphanumeric display. Now this means that you can take your just your standard frequency. You know, if you have a repeater like here locally, uh, the Cleveland repeater is 145.490. You can save that and just leave it as a frequency if you want. Or you can add a name to it. You can do the call sign, which the call sign of the repeater here in Cleveland is KY50. I can do that if I wanted to. I can do uh, a abbreviated version of Cleveland because it's more than seven characters. But you only have seven. So sometimes you gotta get kinda creative. There is a front data port on this radio. It kinda looks like a, uh, like an eighth inch, well it is, a eighth inch jack. And it's on the front left corner of this, um, of the radio, and you can see it on the picture here, the whole diagram of what this radio has. It does have a front data port to hook a GPS to, and it has a rear DSUB9 connector on the back to hook it to your computer. Now this does require a uh, a TNC if you're going to be using it without an external TNC uh, or the TNC module rather and that is the uh, EJ-41U. It is a daughter board that you can plug into this radio on the inside of it 
and this radio will act alone as radio and TNC. So you can hook it up and use it as APRS as you're driving down the road as long as you have a GPS connected to it. Uh, this was actually the first radio that bought the previous, previous version of this. It was the 135TQ. Um, and I bought that back in college, back in 1998. Um, and it had a built-in TNC. And my dad still has that radio to this day and uses it for his weather station to transmit his weather station data over the APRS network on RF. So with the TNC module, it can be used for APRS, it can be used for standard packet um, on VHF uh, or UHF, whichever one you choose. Uh, but you do have to have the daughter board to use it without an external TNC. Now it does have the connector on the back that you can hook from there to an external TNC and then from the TNC to your computer and it will still work. But if you want to get rid of that extra piece of hardware, you can put that daughter board inside the computer, inside the radio, and you'll be good to go. One of the very unique features of this radio is it has an anti-theft system built into it. Now let me see if I can explain this. There is a cable you can buy, it is the alarm cable, it, model number is ADALM135. And basically what this does is it will connect to the data port on the radio and it will connect, uh, wrap around your steering wheel. So basically you have to have this radio close enough to your steering wheel that this will work. Probably mount it underneath your dash or somewhere along those lines to get it to work the best. You know, if you put it underneath your seat or something like that, it might be kind of hard to do. But basically what this does is if the cable is not disconnected in the proper way, it will emit a very high pitch sound for 10 minutes or until it's disabled. Now if you were to pull this cord out, not only will you get the sound, but the radio will automatically tune to memory channel 99 and wait for a signal. Um, that If that radio receives a signal, uh, uh, the code or whatever you have set um, as the signal to turn off, it will automatically turn off. Or you can turn on the radio with the squelch button depressed and it will also turn off the alarm. So in order to turn it off, hold down the squelch button, hit, turn it on, and then disconnect the, the cable from the front of the radio. I see good things and I see bad things with this. Yes, it would be, you know, most people are not going to know how to do the squelch, hold down the squelch and turn it on and stuff like that to turn it off. And it's going to have a very high pitched sound when they're driving down the road if they stole your car or something like that. So neat little feature, not a big selling point, but it is there. Now you can also get a optional voice module, which is the EJ47U. Now I looked on the internet trying to find ex exactly what this module did, and I never really got a fully clear answer of what it was. Basically it was a one line description of allowing you to transmit digital voice over the air. Now this is a analog radio to begin with. And this module, from my understanding, does not allow it to work on D-Star, does not allow it to work on C, uh, C4FM or um, anything like that. It changes the analog signal to a digital signal and transmits it out over the air. Meaning that just like your over-the-air uh, TV antenna used to be analog antenna and you would get the little snow if you were at the edges of the of the uh, transmitter site uh, or static or something like that. Now it is all digital so it's either basically there or it's not there and, and that's basically it seems like this is what this module is going to be. You're going to have better sounding audio, more clear, more rich sounding audio uh, but you're either going to be there or not there. So is the module worth it? I'm thinking probably not. But you can only have either the voice module or the TNC module. You can't have both. So I think the TNC module is a much better buy 
uh, to put in this radio to use it for a PRS or for packet or you know whatever kind of digital mode you want to use on uh, your VHF or UHF modes. So that is it for this radio. I really like this radio. It is a very neat little radio. So next week we're going to be talking about the Alinko DJ-50T. It is a dual band uh, HT radio. So make sure you click on the subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss the videos that I put out um, and all the other things that I put out as well. So thank you very much for watching and until next time y'all this is K5CLM signing out. 73 y'all.